three weeks. Count them, one, two, three, 21 days. How many hours? A few. Mm, I don't know, I put myself on the spot there, I can't calculate that. But I have three weeks until my first ever London Marathon, which I've been training for since, I reckon, August, September properly, with that in mind, that specific goal. And guess what? I'm injured. But I have a plan. directly up so anyway as I was saying we've been training for events that are going to push ourselves since August September time Mary's done a 10k for the first time ever she's done a half marathon now for the first time ever she's got another one next week I did the same 10k um, I did a I dragged myself around a marathon on New Year's Eve a trail marathon which was really nice and since then I've done an ultra marathon you know, we've really been pushing ourselves, but about three or four weeks ago, I just felt this, like this niggle in my hip and groin that just wouldn't go away and started building. So I tried to rest it a little bit and that I thought worked. I went on a couple of six kilometer runs, which is, you know, little baby runs when you think I'm trying to run London Marathon. No pain, but the other day I went for a 10K and then a 12K and I had to stop. There was too much pain. So I've had to go to plan B. So what is plan B, I hear you ask, Ben? Well, seeing as you're asking so nicely, I will tell you. This week, with four weeks to go at the start of the week, what I decided was that I don't think I'm gonna get a long run in between now and the marathon. I don't think that's a realistic possibility. So what I've done is two things. I've carried on training as hard as I can and focused on the other disciplines of triathlon. I even, get this, I even went swimming. And if you know me or anything about me, you know that even though I'm a triathlete, I can't stand swimming. But I went swimming this week because I thought that would keep my cardiovascular endurance up. Did a couple of big bike rides, I've done some turbos, I've done some shorter runs as well. Long road ahead. So that's part of plan B. Let's call that plan B phase one. So plan B phase two, or part two. Did I say phase two or part two last time? What did I say? Phase. Phase. Plan, plan B phase two is back myself, believe in myself. I still think I'm very capable of running the London Marathon. I still think I'm really capable of running a decent time. Um, I think I've got the miles in the bank from six months of good running training. So it's just about believing in myself a little bit, not worrying if I don't get a long run in between now and then, because I've, you know, I've, I ran an ultra marathon at the start of February. I know it's in the bank, I know I can do it. So this week I just invested in myself in other ways. What I did was on the Monday, I went to see a physio who checked me for muscle imbalances and any weaknesses that she could find there. We did a, a, a basic run analysis to see if there was anything that could be easily picked up or any postural misalignment. So that gave me something to go away and think about and work on. I've got some strengthening exercises to do. Then on Wednesday, Claire from the Kemp Running Coach really kindly got in touch with me and said, look, I, can, I know you're struggling, I know you're worried about the London Marathon, come in and we'll do a run analysis and we'll see if we can find anything obvious that is going wrong that might be causing this injury. Really, really kind of her. So I went in and we sat down and had a chat and we did the run analysis and actually I came away with some really interesting stuff. Claire seems to think that it might actually be my arm that's causing all of this problem. I have like a weird arm, but well, that's not for now. Um, after that, I went to the osteopath, who is a great guy. I see him quite often because I've had back issues in the past. Um, had a long chat with Mark about it all, and he kind of clicked my back around, which was great, and freed it up a little bit and gave me some exercises to do as well. So yes, there was some financial outlay to it, but the way I was looking at it is that it is worth it if this gets me to the start line at all for London and allows me to train onward for the Ironman and for the, the race in Romania. You know, you can't put a price on being able to have an injury-free season. Ah, 
I love tea, I'm so British. How am I gonna approach London then? In a way I feel a bit of a release actually because I'm gonna give myself the best possible chance in the next three weeks of running the marathon and running it in the time that I think I'm capable of but I'm no longer worried about whether I do or not. And that feels good because either way now I'm gonna soak up the atmosphere on the day and vlog it all the way round and just enjoy it. The thing is, it's the process of the training and preparation that I'm addicted to. It's not the one day outcome. There'll be other marathons for me, there'll be other Londons probably, and once you emotionally detach yourself from that end goal and just focus on the process of being the best person that you can be at events and each and every day, that's where the real magic happens. So if you want to see me try and run the London Marathon, and if you want to see me try and do it in sub three, or if you want to see me represent GB in Romania at the Middle Distance Triathlon Championships, or if you want to see me do an Ironman in Copenhagen at the end of the season, all of the while doing tutorials that give you training tips, both physical and mental, then it's probably best that you get subscribed to the channel like this video, drop me a comment, even if it's just to wish me good luck, which I think I'm probably gonna need, do all of the things, and I will see you on Tuesday.